Good evening, everyone. Just a reminder, we ask that you turn off all cell phones. We also want to remind you that this meeting is being live streamed and will be archived. Approval of agenda, motion that the agenda for the regular board meeting of January 28th, 2020 be approved. Moved by Trustee Cosmerly, seconded by Trustee Hunda. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Preliminary declarations of pecuniary interest. We have a presentation this evening and I'm going to call on Director Blazik to take it from here. Thank you, Madam Chair. Chair Dewar, trustees, executive council, and members of the public. Each year, EQAO recognizes schools that have used data effectively to support student learning. EQAO stands for Education Quality and Accountability Office. It is the provincial body that administers assessment in reading, writing, and math in schools across Ontario. To be recognized, therefore, is truly significant. Your school is held up as a shining example among 896 secondary schools with approximately 628,000 students in 72 school boards. And your educators and instructional leaders, instructional leaders are held up as a role model for student success. You not only receive a plaque named in honor of our highly respected champion for education, more importantly, you have an opportunity to share your success story with peers across the province. And so, it is with tremendous pride that we have the honor this evening of presenting the 2018 Dr. Betty M. Stevenson Recognition of Achievement Award to Sudbury Secondary School on behalf of EQAO. With this award, EQAO acknowledges and applauds the tremendous work of Sudbury Secondary School staff in nurturing a passion in math among students and implementing focus strategies with positive results. We have invited the educators who inspire student achievement in mathematics at Sudbury Secondary School to join us here this evening. I would ask the following come forward and I would ask that you stand right here facing trustees. Heather Downey, Principal. Crystal Gibbs, Program Leader of New Mercy. Jeanette Langshire, Program Leader for Exceptional Programming. Clinton Jamis, Mathematics Computers Teacher. And Ryan Wilson, Mathematics History Teacher. They will look familiar to many of you. This dedicated team shared their journey of learning at the board meeting in October 2018. Here's the cumulative data, which measures the impact of their work. 2017-18 school year, Sudbury Secondary School's Grade 9 Applied Math scores increased by 25 percentage points. Grade 9 Academic Math results increased by 20 percentage points. In the 2018-19 school year, Sudbury Secondary School maintained its applied results. Academic results increased by 6 percentage points. It is evident that this school students have demonstrated their fulfillment of curriculum expectations on EQAO assessments during the last three years, as well as an interest in math, said Nora Marsh, Chief Executive Officer. She added, it's important to recognize the tremendous work of school staff to foster positive attitudes and their use of strategies to support students. An information graph produced by EQAO highlighted four areas that made a difference. Transition planning, EQAO data, diagnostic assessments, and finally, monitoring and refinement. At Sudbury Secondary School, teachers meet with feeder schools to help students transi transition smoothly into grade nine. Educators connect to talk about learning needs. The previous year's assessment data is used to inform teacher practice. Trends over time determine areas of strength and need. Diagnostic assessments identify students for additional instructional support. Learning gaps are addressed. Collaborative inquiry meetings are held to discuss the data. There is ongoing monitoring and student feedback. 
EQAO's information graph focused on two interventions, spiraling the curriculum, and secondly, the algebra continuum. Sudbury Secondary School teaches key math concepts repeatedly with deepening layers of complexity throughout the course. Math taught through spiraling helps students retain and recall. A continuum of algebraic concepts is used to move students forward. Students advance to the next stage once they have mastered specific skills. At this time, I would like to invite Chair Dewar to join me in presenting the 2018 Dr. Betty M. Stevenson Recognition of Achievement Award to Sub Sudbury Secondary School. Congratulations, we're so proud of you. to recognize Trustee Morrison. Through you, Madam Chair, just to that dynamic team at Sudbury Secondary, thank you very much for making a difference. There was one key phrase that I did remember, which was the spiraling, but now to hear it actually be quoted again at an at award ceremony. So I did learn something from your presentation to us in October a couple a year and a half ago. So thank you very much for the difference you've made for your student. And, and to Principal Downey, I just want to say I was really hoping to meet tonight the graduate from class of 2037. But I guess I didn't get an opportunity. So congratulations and thank you again. Report from the in-camera committee of the whole meeting of the board, Director Blazik. Motion that the board ratified the local agreement between Rainbow District School Board and QP Local 895 as recommended by the Labor Relations Committee. Moved by Trustee Morrison, seconded by Trustee Clement. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Old business, previous minutes, motion that the minutes of the organizational board meeting held on Tuesday, December the 10th, 2019, be approved. Moved by Trustee Cosmerly, seconded by Trustee Morrison. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Get you next time, Trustee St. Jean. Motion that the minutes of the regular board meeting, <coughs> excuse me, held on Tuesday, December the 10th, 2019, be approved. Moved by Trustee St. Jean. Seconded by Trustee Morrison. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. No tenders or requests for proposal, reports and recommendations from board committees. New, uh, under new businesses, under new business, revised estimates for 20, 19, 20, 20, and I'll call on the director of business, uh, the superintendent of business, Pazanet. Uh, uh,
Thank you, Madam Chair. It's my pleasure to present the 2019-2020 revised estimates this evening. And everyone has received a hard copy, therefore uh, it's easier to follow the information, but it is also projected. Uh, essentially, it's a very good news story this evening. Uh, you will clearly see in the upcoming pages that we've experienced uh, an increase in our enrollment and our financial position has improved uh, as compared to the budget that was filed in July of 2019. So I'd ask that you turn to page two of the report. Here we see that uh, we have the average daily enrollment and we're comparing the 1920 budget with the revised estimates. And we see we experienced an increase in our elementary enrollment of 295, secondary 136, adult day school seven for a total increase of 438 ADE students. So certainly uh, we're pleased to see that in uh, terms of uh, our October 31st count as well as our projections for March of 31 of 2020. So if you look on page three, what we have done here is we have summarized for you the priorities and partnership funds, the PPFs. Uh, recall that we used to refer to these as the EPOs, and they are funding that are outside of the GSNs, and this is the list of the various uh, PPFs announced to date. So the focus uh, this evening is to just list them and to provide the dollar value our plan is to bring a separate report on the PPFs to you at a future meeting, whereby we would elaborate on the details of these various initiatives. Uh, trustees will recall that for each of these initiatives, the boards receive a transfer payment agreement. Therefore, the ministry describes to the boards their expectation as it relates to these various initiatives. So we hope that you look forward to receiving that at a future date. So we see that we have an extensive list and it totals uh, just over $2.2 million over and above our GSN funding. So if we look at page four of the report, uh, this is where we see the uh, revenues that are summarized for the various grants as well as other allocations uh, of other revenue, as well as any amounts that are brought from reserves or deferred revenues. I'd like to draw your attention essentially to the middle of the page where it says total operating allocation. So you will see that when we did our budget in July of last year, uh, the revenue was $175.8 uh, million, and that's increased to $178.5 million. So therefore, we are experiencing a projected revenue increase of $2.6 million. I just wanna pause for a moment because on the previous page when we looked at enrollment, we have over 400 students of increased enrollment. So at an average of 10,000 per student, one would expect that our revenue should have increased somewhere in the order of $4 million. So it's a good reminder, and we'll look at some of the details, that not all the grants uh, are affected in the same way when we see the increased enrollment. Those grants that are typically there to assist boards when it's experienced declining enrollment have a negative effect once you experience increased enrollment. So if we look uh, essentially and we go from that line which is the middle of the page and we go up and we see uh, the grant that's entitled declining enrollment adjustment. When we did the July budget, we expected $739,000 in, in that grant. And with the increased enrollment, that grant has evaporated to zero. Therefore, it's a net loss of $739,000. And just above that, you see student transportation. Again, we see a decrease of $279,000. Essentially, with the transportation grant, it, the previous fiscal year affects the current fiscal year. So given that we did our year end in the fall of 2019, that uh, those values impact the current year, which is why you see that it's not a net increase just because you experienced uh, enrollment growth. If we continue up and we look at the next value that's in parentheses, it's the 
supported schools allocation, again, a loss of $271,000. And once again, that is because uh, those grants are there to support boards when they're experienced that declining enrollment and provides some stabilization. However, the reverse effect uh, hits us when we see that increased enrollment. And we see the various amounts that fluctuate uh, which are tied to enrollment. And of course, the very first line, the Pupil Foundation Grant is 100% funded with student enrollment, therefore it has a direct impact and it is of course one of our largest uh, funding sources. If I draw your attention uh, to uh, beneath, beneath the uh, line that says total allocation, we see other revenues. And I just want to comment, and we just saw that on the previous page where the priorities and partnership fund, essentially we went from a zero value when we did the budget to now a value of $2.2 million of additional revenue for delivery of those initiatives. And if we come down and we see that we're also bringing into revenue from student focus, 1.7 million, uh, special education, a large amount, which is the carry forward from the year end, 3.4 million, and school renewal, once again, which is uh, 3.1 million. So essentially for the accumulated surplus, which is just above the very bottom total line, we see that when we did the July budget, we uh, predicted a deficit of 919,000, whereas now we're predicting a surplus of just under $400,000. So once again, it, it's an improved financial position from our previous budget position. If we proceed to the following page, it essentially is just taking uh, those values on the previous page and reflecting them as to expenses on the various categories. So naturally the bottom line does match. And we see of course that instruction uh, sees the largest increase in the sense of operating. Whereas pupil accommodation, we see the over almost 4 million, most of which is due to the carry forward of school renewal, which is the capital component. So once again, it's, a, it's an increase of uh, expenses in the various areas as supported by the increased revenues on the previous page. Of course, on the final page, which is a summary of our uh, reserve positions, uh, we have on the left-hand side the various components of our reserves, and we have the columns, which are our starting balance, where we predict additions and withdrawals and the estimated balance as of August 31st of 2020. So the very first one, the accumulated surplus, is the prediction of adding 384,000 into accumulated surplus, therefore predicting an ending balance in August of 6.9 million. If we come down the page, there's no change for retirement gratuities or employee future benefits in terms of activity predicted for the year. Student focus, we see we have a starting position, 4.3 million. We will draw down 1.7 and a predicted ending balance of 2.5. The withdrawal is essentially three components. There's carry forward of previous decisions uh, by the board, namely in the area of international students, mental health, and the construction of the LaSalle multi-use sports facility. That's what that number represents, that's 1.7 million. In terms of education, we show the opening balance uh, and the withdrawal as, as being available to do delivery of services throughout the current fiscal year. Proceeds of dispositions is the dollar value where we add to this reserve whenever we sell our surplus properties. And essentially this, this number can be used uh, for capital improvements, very similar to our SCI, our school condition improvement, whereby we can improve our facilities uh, from a capital nature. So that, Madam Chair, essentially is the report for this evening and uh, more than welcome to entertain any questions. Trustee Cosmerly. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, just one question. Um, are there any PPFs that are outstanding at this point or have we, have we received information about any of the PPFs that we expected to hear about for this year? 
essentially what's listed it is what has been announced and received. Uh, unless the academic superintendents are aware of any, I, I'm not aware of any that are forthcoming that have been announced. And again, as, as I stated previously, as we look to bringing you that uh, additional report on the PPFs, if between tonight's meeting and, and that meeting, there are new uh, announcements, we would certainly include those as well. Thank you very much, Trustee Morrison. Through you, Madam Chair. Um, Dennis, just, just wondering, I, my memory is when we passed this budget last July, um, that we were having to take almost a million dollars from reserves to balance our budget? That is correct. And so now with this good news and increased enrollment, which by the way, I think for our board, this first time I remember looking at a list where we were getting declining grants then, in declining grant enrollment because, because we're a board with growing enrollment. First time I remember that happening. So if my memory was that we needed to take about a million dollars out of reserves to balance our budget last July, because we have to pass a balanced budget, what are we having to withdraw now, if any? We're actually predicting we would be adding 400,000 to the accumulated surplus, which is that amount shown on that last page. Thank you, Dennis. I just wanted to clarify that because most of us may be walking around with about a million dollars in our head that we had to find from reserves to balance that budget last year. So as a result of that increased enrollment, we don't no longer have to withdraw. And in fact, we're able to put 400,000 back into reserves. Yes, I, I will just always caution that uh, we're still using a predicted enrollment for March 31st. Therefore, all numbers are still predicted. So there's always an element of risk. However, we're confident that uh, given the current nature, especially in elementary schools, we typically do see a very stable enrollment and we've adjusted the enrollment for uh, secondary schools for March 31st already. Trustee Clement. Going back to page two, PPFs. Um, those figures and those categories, are they flexible? The amounts, are they set in stone for each category? Uh, on page three, the PPFs that you're referring P to? PPF. Yes, those are the amounts that have been uh, announced for our board because typically they are board by board allocations of which we do receive uh, documents to transfer payment agreements. So they are dictated for these firm amounts. For those categories? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Trustee Gibson. Thank you, through you, Chair Dewar. Um, I'm just curious about the um, the makeup of the um, the 1.7 million, which you said um, it's the amount we spend on recruiting international students, mental health, and the multi-use facility at LaSalle. So I think mental health, it's 200,000. Is is that the amount there? I was just curious, what's the amount that we spend on the international student program out of that 1.7? Essentially of the 1.7, 1.5 is for the construction of the multi-use. So the other distribution is the remaining amounts from the initial allocations. Uh, I don't have the exact breakdown, but it's somewhere in the order of just over 120,000 each, give or take. Oh, so the bulk. So is. the bulk is certainly the most recent uh, uh, motion that was passed for the multi-use, of which we incurred some of the costs last summer in the previous fiscal year, so this would be the balance. Thank you. Well, I, I want to thank you very much for this, and I know that uh, you are always available if trustees wish to give you a call if they have any questions. And I thank you very much. Did you want to take the next item from here or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Perfect. Perfect. Essentially, uh, this is a follow up to previous information that was shared with the boards regarding the capital plans and the fact that we will be amalgamating uh, the schools or consolidating the schools in Chelmsford. Therefore, Chelmsford Public School, the all grade levels, JK to grade six are scheduled to be transferred to the new JK to grade 12 school, the CBDCS building 
before September 1st of 2020. Therefore, the property of Chelmsford Public Building, school building, essentially uh, is no longer needed for delivery of program here at the Rainbow Board. Therefore, we have this motion that is presented to trustees for your consideration. Motion. Sorry, motion that the property at 121 Charlotte Avenue, Chelmsford, Ontario, POM 1L0, Chelmsford Public School, be declared surplus to the needs of Rainbow District School Board as of June 30th, 2020. Moved by Trustee Morrison, seconded by Trustee Stringer. Any questions, discussions? Trustee Morrison? Through you, Madam Chair, to the Superintendent of Business. Um, Dennis, just, just wondering, we've got the June 30th date there. Uh, on there, I'm assuming that's related to the end of the school year because we still have kids in a building until the end of the school year? Absolutely, it's coordinating with the academic school year versus our fiscal year. Okay. So would, and, and a f follow up if I could, Madam Chair. Absolutely. So it means the formal process, which starts off with contacting our coterminous boards to see if they want the property and so on, that hasn't begun then? Uh, essentially, uh, once the board passes a motion, such as the one you have before you this evening, uh, then we would initiate that process of disposition per the regulation. Through you, Madam Chair, to Superintendent Bazinet. What would be our um, predicted enrollment for next year for CVDCS JK to grade 12? Approximately? Essentially, uh, I'm working from memory, is we have roughly uh, currently 240 students at Chelmsford Public and roughly 175 currently grade 7 to 12 at CVDCS. Okay. And those are approximate. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'd like to call the question. <laughs> Trustee Gibson. Thank you, Chair Dewar. Um, just uh, through you, a question for Superintendent Bazinet. Uh, I know at the most recent uh, strategic planning meeting, we had a report uh, from the manager of facilities uh, and the timeline was that the school would be finished for September. Uh, if there was a, something unforeseeable that happened, what is our contingency um, in terms of who, if we declare it surplus? Um, and secondly, are there any programs or community use that would normally take place over the summer that might be affected by this um, in those few months before the new facility is available in September? Uh, just a point of clarification, uh, the mere fact of declaring a building surplus does not mean it's actually disposed of. Therefore, we do retain ownership up to the point where we would actually transfer it or sell it. Therefore, it's still available for our use. A and just we do expect from a, a construction perspective to need to use this building, uh, the old Chelmsford Public School for staging purposes as we are undergoing uh, the transformation of the other building. Uh, in terms of contingency, we have full confidence that we will be ready for the transfer of the elementary students for the beginning of uh, September 2020. Thank you. Thank you very much. Call the question. Do I have a mover and a seconder? Yes. Call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. A motion that the board approve the attendance of student trustee Colleen Govro at the OSTA Board Council Conference in Ottawa, February the 20th to the 23rd, 2020. Moved by Trustee Hunda, seconded by Trustee St. Jean. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Requests for leave of absence? There are none. Uh, director's remarks. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> A number of items I'd like to, um, to bring forward tonight, uh, uh, but I'll leave uh, some of the more uh, uh, salient points to uh, Superintendent Burgett and, of course, uh, 
and possibly uh, we're looking at uh, Tiffany from HR. But let me let me speak to this first, though. On Sunday, we were notified by the um, actually it was Saturday we were notified by the deputy minister uh, of education, Nancy Naylor, that um, the uh, uh, the chief medical officer, Dr. David Williams, uh, wanted to have a uh, teleconference to inform. Uh, the boards of what the province was doing to uh, address the um, coronavirus uh, epidemic that's taking shape in, in China and it's of course having its effect throughout the world. And as a result of that, you may have noticed uh, that on Monday there was a message. Uh, we received a letter from, from him, uh, which is uh, to be updated on a daily basis and I haven't checked today to see whether or not there was an update today. Uh, but uh, we are giving, uh, getting updates to inform um, our local population. And that, of course, means yourself and our staff and, of course, our students. Uh, and our challenge, of course, is always to make sure what information can we get out as quickly as we can and try to ensure that people are practicing uh, evidence-based um, practices that will alleviate any risk. Uh, we continue to hear that our, that our, our Ontario was safe. Uh, and there were rest, his, I use his words, students, parents, and school communities should rest assured that the province is working together in close cooperation with its partners in both the education and health care sectors to ensure that the continued safety and well-being of students and staff. And I just want to reiterate, there are five, five basic things that they're speaking to, and this is not rocket science, but I'm just going to re reiterate it, and which he used in, the, in his letter. Again, getting your influenza vaccination, uh, washing your hands frequently with soap and water, uh, covering your mouth and nose when you cough or sneeze, uh, and if you don't have to sneeze, if you don't have tissue, of course, uh, cough into your arm. Uh, and the final piece, which was if you or your family members are real, stay home. So those are the five nuggets that we'll, we keep trying to address. Um, and of course, as we gain more information, we'll certainly share that. But I just think it's imperative that we understand that the, the ministry, through education, uh, is taking an active role in trying to educate the public. At this time, though, you're all aware of the fact that we don't send hard copies home. So it, it is a bit of a challenge if we do not have the opportunity, that is apparent, that is, if they don't have access to a computer, they would not receive this information uh, clearly as, as quickly as those that would. So having said that, and we know this is on our radar and you will see uh, regular updates as, in, as it relates to that. Secondly, I just wanted you to know that um, with the Bell Let's Talk initiative on uh, this Wednesday, we do have, I don't know if you noticed when you walked into the foyer, but there are placemats and they're there. They're available for you to comment. And of course, I would encourage everyone to do so. It is after hearing our conversation at the strategic planning, I think it's a wonderful idea that if you have an opportunity, please participate in that because we are a board that is trying to actively seek answers and supports for, for the folks in need. Uh, and again, we'll, we'll, we'll frame it around mental wellness and uh, we're, that's our, what we're striving for on a, on a daily, uh, daily basis. So I thank you for that, for those who are participating. As well, I also wanted to just to, to remind everybody, and I'm just gonna um, bring into the piece up with regards to the, uh, the current label unrest. And I'm gonna ask again at this point to uh, have uh, Superintendent Bridget uh, speak about the, the report cards, and then also follow up uh, with regards to the, uh, some of the dates that have been scheduled for um, labor action. So if I can just pass it over to Superintendent Bridget. Thank you, Director. There's a few pieces here that we'll share. I'll cover some report card information and perhaps Manager of Human Resources, Tiffany Hayes, will speak a bit about upcoming dates. But in terms of report cards, it's just to inform everyone that for elementary, the report cards will not be going out. Um, but teachers will be submitting some hard copies of marks to administrators. They won't be input into the system, so not available for distribution. But assessment and evaluation of our students is continuing, and students are progressing in their classrooms instructionally. Uh, administrators will receive the hard copies, and those will be on file, and we will proceed in that manner. In secondary schools, it's slightly different. The uh, big difference, actually, is that teachers will be inputting marks in our student information system. They will uh, submit attendance and lates and also some learning skills and what that will amount to is that report cards will be distributed. The one thing that will not go out 
is comments that are subject based. So when a student takes three or four courses, depending on their timetable, each course usually has comments from their teacher that outline their progress. That won't be available. What will be submitted on the report card centrally inputted into each report card from information services is a centralized comment just to recognize the fact that there's a provincial labor dispute and that there is not going to be report card comments entered as part of a legal work to rule. So that will be a major difference for the secondary report cards, but they will go out. The elementary again will not. However, assessment evaluation does continue and principals will receive hard copies which uh, will be kept on file of the marks of the students and some comments, but it will not be entered into a system, so therefore not available for distribution. Our manager of human resources, Tiffany Hayes, also would like to contribute to give some updates on some dates coming up next week. Hi, everyone. So just wanted to provide a labor relations update with regards to uh, withdrawal of services that are occurring next week that we've been notified of. So ETFO will engage in a full withdrawal of services on Tuesday, February the 4th and Thursday, February the 6th. The fourth being, of course, board specific, the sixth being a province-wide uh, withdrawal of services from ETFO. ETFO represents our elementary teachers, permanents and occasionals, and also our DECEs, so our early childhood educators. The mediator has invited those parties back to the table, so uh, that will be scheduled tomorrow at 10.30 a.m., so hopefully there's some, some movement there and positive outcomes for both sides. We also have not been notified about OSSTF at this point, but uh, there has been a break from some of their job uh, action regarding the uh, exams that are occurring this week, so we anticipate that something will be presented soon regarding job action that will continue for them as well next week. Thank you very much. Any questions of the superintendents and of the, no, okay, uh, Director Blasek. Thank you, Madam Chair. And just one final note. I just and and <laughs> we kind of kind of lose sight sometimes of some of the things that are happening throughout the course of the year. And of course, this Friday is a PD day. So I just want to remind folks that that is a legitimate <laughs> PD day, and that that there just seems to be a lot of days that we're juggling right now. So I just wanted to remind all the folks. And and that's it for me, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, uh, OBSPA delegate um, Trustee Clement. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we were at the PES conference this weekend uh, where um, a lot of the panels um, talked about uh, leadership. And um, one of the panels um, was, I um, can't remember the title, Watch Out What You Asked For, was it some of this here anyways. Uh, the rumors are out there pretty heavy that um, the government is uh, looking at a lot of boards and uh, maybe possibly just getting rid of boards altogether. So. The, what they wanted all the trustees to know and to do is to remember the role of the trustee. Uh, a lot of boards are having a hard time with trustees who speak out of turn on their own. And um, when you do that, you're representing the board and the board has to answer. So they're really focusing on working as a board and speak only through the chair or through your director, which make a lot more sense. Uh, we know that uh, after the Nanos poll, that the voting public, uh, the, they're uh, in favor of the boards. We, we know that, so it makes the government sit back a little bit. And um, one of the speakers, Zia Tong, I think it was, uh, she based on her leadership speech on uh, the animal kingdom and starts off that uh, we are called slime balls. And um, she, I never understand that. It was, I thought, I, I didn't know it was a living organism, but apparently it's very bright and it starts from there, so we all had a good laugh over that one. But uh, then the next day we had our northern uh, meeting and we gave them all an update of all our boards of what we're doing. Um, I gave them an update on um, the, um, what we're doing with our report cards and uh, EQOs. And um, everybody's pretty well in the same boat waiting. So that's all I have, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, student trustee Govro. Um, 
right now the Senate we're working on our conference that's going to be April 29th and 30th at Dynamic Earth. We're hosting an environmental conference. So right now we're just working on getting in contact with speakers. We're trying to make them as local as possible and getting a menu and like food and figuring that stuff out. Thank you very much. Trustee's remarks. Uh, Trustee Cosmerly. Sorry, I just want to, I just want to add to um, to Trustee Clement's comments. We're not slime balls; it's slime. Period. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what Sia Tong was saying was that usually people see the emblem as, of leaders as lions, and they should not look at lions as being the leaders. It's the lionesses that do the work. Um, what she said is instead we should aspire to be like slime uh, because slime shows a number of leadership qualities and I'll just leave it there. Um, but sorry, it made me laugh when you talked about slime balls because that's not quite the, what, the way she phrased it. Anyway, I also attended uh, the PEZ with Trustee Clément and Trustee St. Jean this past weekend. Just a couple of things I wanted to share as well. The minister, uh, the Honorable uh, Stephen Lecce, our minister, was the uh, opening speaker for the conference. Uh, he is very articulate. Um, he talked about the, um, the things that the government has done, uh, which is not surprising. And what was surprising was he took questions from the floor. Uh, so that was really quite interesting, and he did answer the questions as much as he could. Um, whether or not they were good answers is in the eye of the beholder, but anyway, he answered them. Uh, secondly, as, as Trustee Clement, uh, Clement said, the focus seemed to be on leadership with this conference. A lot of the sessions were, were based on leadership. My favorite one was... Um, uh, it was a session that I went to about communication and advocacy in local communities. Uh, it was a panel discussion, and one of the panelists was Tim Hudak, who some of you will recall was a former, I think he was a premier at one time, but he was uh, quite involved in the PC party. Um, he was actually quite interesting to listen to until he spoke at the end and it was more political, but other than that, it was quite, quite good. Um, I wanted to say as well, with respect to the conference, OPSPA has piloted an event app for the conference that they're planning to use for all future conferences. It actually was quite good. I did take a look at it. There's pictures from the conference. There's uh, bios. There, everything is on it. So they're, they're asking for our feedback now, and they plan to use it for all future events. So that's the first item I want to talk about. There's two others I wanted to raise. One is that the Human Rights, the Ontario Human Rights Commission is conducting a province-wide <coughs> inquiry, inquiry right now entitled The Right to Read with respect to students with learning disabilities uh, in Ontario schools. Um, there is an online survey uh, and it can be accessed on their website at ohrc.on.ca. Uh, so I encourage people to complete the survey and, and to share information. I did hear a podcast uh, that was done on CBC Radio uh, with respect to this particular survey, and they do talk about the Empower program and how uh, beneficial the Empower program is for students who have severe learning disabilities. I think the more people who can speak up for programs like that, for those students who need it, uh, the more recognition will be out there. Um, and finally, the, the last thing I'd like to ask, uh, we had conversations, especially Carrie and I over the, uh, the weekend, regarding student trustees, um, whether or not we should be, as a board, considering having Aboriginal student trustees or Indigenous student trustees, whether or not we should be changing the number of years that we have trustees on the board, be it one year or two years. That's something that was raised at the Northern meeting. Um, I'd really like to ask that we have maybe as a topic one night uh, at a board meeting, maybe a presentation about student senate, and we have a, a fulsome conversation about student trustees and maybe make some decisions if we must. Thank you. Very much. Um, 
uh, sorry, uh, Margaret, Trustee Vink, Margaret Stringer. Thank you, Chair Dewar. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to celebrate a Signac Public School grade three, four teacher, Heather Jeffkins, who has, is the recipient of the Governor General's History Award in Excellence in Teaching. And uh, I believe that Chair Dewar will be speaking a little more to this, but I just wanted to add that I think this award um, recognizes Heather's achievement in helping students make connections between their families and history. It reflects her passion for community connections and partnerships in our communities and in education. So um, we're all very proud of Heather and I'd like to extend my sincere congratulations to her. Thank you. Thank you very much. Did I see somebody else's hand up? Trustee Morrison, sorry. Just a quick comment, Madam Chair. Um, yesterday was um, Holocaust Remembrance Day and um, as I was reading a couple of things, and I know we had activities going on in schools, but it also just really occurred to me that the really every year that goes by, we have fewer and fewer survivors who are able to give firsthand accounts of their experience. That kind of concerns me, but just one of the things that I heard say, and this was shared with me by uh, um, a young person, um, but it really sort of hit me, it was impactful, so I thought I'd share it tonight. If all of us, um, gave one moment of silence for every victim of the Holocaust, we would be sitting here in silence for 11 and a half years. That's all I'll say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Trustee Morrison. That was excellent. Much appreciated. Um, chairs, no, I want to just make sure, okay. Chairs remarks. Heather Jeffkins, I'm going to talk about her again because it's well worth discussing. Grade three, four teacher at Asiganak Public School on Manitoulin Island has received the prestigious Governor General's History Award for Excellence in Teaching. Her Excellency, the Right Honorable Julie Payette, Governor General of Canada, presided over the ceremony on January the 20th 2020 at Rideau Hall in Ottawa. Heather Jeffkins engaged her students in a project called Weaving Stories and Stitching History. The history project integrated outcomes in social studies, language arts, vi and visual arts through a combination of online research, consultation with community artisans, and hands-on experience with textile art. Congratulations once again to Heather Jeffkins. Lauren Radula, a grade 12 student from LaSalle Secondary School, joined Team Canada in curling at the third annual Youth Winter Olympics in Switzerland. Lauren was chosen by the Canadian Olympics Committee to lead Team Canada as flag bearer during the opening ceremonies. What an honor. And now I'd like you to circle your calendars. There's lots of different dates that uh, we've got coming up that we need to know about. First of all, tomorrow, Wednesday, January 29th, as Director Blazik mentioned, that is Bell Let's Talk Day. We will invite everyone to join the conversation about mental health, including sign, signing a placemat in the reception area. Rainbow District School Board is committed to end the stigma and support student mental health and well-being. Just a reminder about another day, there is no school for students on Family Day. That's coming up on February the 17th. The board's environmental committee invites staff and students to take part in the Polar Bear Challenge on International Polar Bear Day, which is Thursday, February 27th. Every year, this global event draws attention to what we can do to make a difference to reduce greenhouse gas emissions that cause the challenges polar bears face in a warming Arctic. 
I'm never, I never cease to be amazed at the, the board's environmental committee. They do such a fabulous job. Parents, guardians of students with special needs and exceptionalities in the Rainbow District School Board are invited to provide input into the 2020-2021 Special Education Plan. Friday, February 28th is the deadline and the survey is available online at rainbowschools.ca. I'd also like to remind everyone to remind their constituents or their uh, parents that information nights continue in Rainbow Secondary Schools, including Chelmsford, Confederation, LaSalle, and Manitoulin. Check the website for dates and times. In fact, I'd like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that the Rainbow District School Board website is the source for information about education in Rainbow Schools. It's really got a lot of information going on it. The thought for the month comes from Albert Einstein. And it kind of fits in with this idea of mental health. And, uh, and so I, 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 I share it with you. He said, everybody is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. I thank you very much. Take a moment, please, and take a look at the future meetings. Make sure we have them all uh, down as for time. Strategic planning. Would you remove that, please? That has been um, that has been uh, postponed or cancelled or what have you. Trustee Wachuk. What? Thank you for the promotion. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <Kathy>. Superintendent. <laughs> um, I just wanted to make note that the SIAC meeting scheduled for February fifth has been cancelled due to um, the labor situation currently. Okay, so. Please, please take note, the special ed advisory committee meeting February 5th has been canceled. Keep an eye on uh, the board website and we try as much as possible to send out emails or notices to keep everybody informed, but it is a, a particularly difficult situation that we're facing and that we're working with and we'll do the best we can to keep everybody informed. Trustee Hunda. Uh, just quickly, Madam Chair, I'm assuming that the, thing, and the same thing will go with the environmental education uh, committee meeting. It'll, again, it's, uh, we see that uh, February has already been canceled due to the, uh, the labor unrest and uh, I'm assuming the same will, we'll have to play that by year for the yeah, first one as well. Well, luckily, it's not to March, eh? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you for pointing that out. Trustee Clement? Madam Chair, uh, not wanting to correct you, but you corrected yourself. Did I? Yeah, you did. You, uh, you mentioned constituents. Uh, yes. So we... Uh, Parents, we, yes. Uh, but, Thank you very much. But we had, that me we had that discussion again at PEZ. Good. Where some people are using constituents, it's the board represents parents and, and teachers, or, I mean students. So that's just like. Just yes. Like thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, that we do now adjourn. Moved by Trustee Morrison, seconded by Trustee Cosmerly. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much. Drive safe.